everybody. Today I am joined by Dr. Joseph Sarkeesian. He is a biological general dentist and I have been working for him for about four and a half years, right out of high school. He's the best. Trust me. I'm really not, but just for the sake of it, we'll, we can say that for today. <laughs> but, but we're going to test to see how much he remembers from dental school. What? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't say that. What did you think we were testing you on? I, I, I thought I was done with my uh, dental board exams and all that, no. and you're going to repeat that all over again? How long has it been since you finished dental school? 30 years. 30? Mm -hmm. Wow. 30 years. Let's see how much you retained from 30 years. Let's see how much dentists in general. You're, you're speaking on behalf of all of dentists right now. Correct. Yes. We we tend to forget a lot. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. So, are you ready? No, but shoot away. Did you pr did you study the night before this this little exam? No, I didn't. Okay. Um by the way, all these questions are coming from Instagram pages that I will link in the description if you guys want to check out other questions. Without further ado, let's get started. According to Peterson Difficulty Index, what is the difficulty level of an impacted tooth which is lying horizontally at level 3 and position C? A. Minimum difficulty. B. Moderate difficulty. C. Very difficult. Or D. Not impacted. So something is that lying horizontally must be very difficult. So. Correct! <laughs> Good. I don't know who Peterson is, but <laughs> it's difficult, okay? Okay. An eight-month-old female infant has history of... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing about dentistry. There are like some long words. K-E-R-N-I-C-T-E-R-U-S. Kernicterus? Kernicterus? Do you even know this word? <laughs> I was like, expecting some complex word, but I don't even know this word. Spell it again. E R U S. Okay. Let's analyze the word. Wait, I'm not even done with the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> An eight month old female infant has history of kernicterus. Kern okay. On sudden movement of the baby's neck, the following features were seen. Abduction and extension of the arms, opening of hands and adduction of arms in front of the body. Which lobe of the baby's brain is affected? A. Frontal, B. Temporal, C. Parietal, or D. Occipital? Occipital. Is that your final answer? Yes. A. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. What? It's what is frontal. It? Frontal. Oh. Do I look like an embryologist or something? It's an eight-month-old female. They're not, they're not in the embryo. But the problem is obviously an embryological problem. Well, you're apparently supposed to know this for dental school, so... Oh my god. Yeah. Can't you just learn things that are really like pertinent, like how to treat a mouth rather no. than a baby going like this? <laughs> One out of two, so you're half, okay. halfway there. <laughs> the bond strength of composite to etch enamel is A, 7 MPA, B, 10 MPA. By the way, I have no idea what MPA means. Megapascals. Oh, wow. He's on the, good, he's on the right track there. Um, okay, so 7 MPA, 10 MPA, 4 MPA, or 20 MPA? Is it to enamel or to dentin? Etched enamel. Enamel. So, I, I guess it's pretty strong, like 20? Final answer? Yes. Yes? Yes. Correct. It is 20 MPA. It better be strong, right? Otherwise those fittings would pop off every second. Resorbability of the roots of primary dentition is explained by A, genetically determined, so it's explained genetically, um, B, pressure applied by successors, mm -hmm. C, both 1 and 2, or mm -hmm. D, none. Both one and two C. 
I remember that particular lecture in embryology from my German course in embryology. And I remember the professor. Are you, are you just that. joking around? Or are you I'm not. Saying? I oh, exactly wow. know exactly what he said. He said, no mortal ever understands why teeth erupt. Exactly. So it's just kind of a combination of a lot of factors. <laughs> okay. He said this I'll in German, keep, by the way. I'll keep that in my mind in English. Yeah. TMJ develops at the age of A, 18 weeks of gestation, B, 10 weeks of gestation, C, 6 weeks of gestation, or D, 29 weeks of gestation. Again, an embryological question. I just picked hard questions and these were hard mm. to me. <laughs> What did you say? Eight? So there's 18 weeks, mm -hmm. 10 weeks, 6 weeks, or 29 weeks? It's pretty early, so let's say... Let's say 10. Is that your final answer? It, I guess so. You're not very confident. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Three months, that's after the first trimester. A lot of things are formed by then. Interesting. Yeah, it's a good cutoff. Who has given root canal isthmus classification? Oh, we're in, in geography now. <laughs> A. Sue and Kim. Shielder. Krasner and Rankow. Or number two Chi. I used to play golf with the two uh, first ones. Um, <laughs> the third one we, we wrote a paper with. Yeah, yeah. And I think I met the fourth one sometime in the, during the <laughs> seminar. Yeah. And what's about the isthmus again? <laughs> Is there an isthmus in a, in a root canal? Classification. Oh, classification. Who of gave the root canal okay. classification, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm. do you want me to say Can I name? call a friend or... <laughs> Who are you going to call? I don't know, do I have like a few You can call Dr. Hamoui. Yeah. Do you want to call Dr. Hamoui? Is he at home? Yeah, let's call you him. You can call him. Yeah, Ask he's, him. He's, he's a more recent... Um, graduate. Maybe he knows these people. Hello? Dr. Hamui. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, you know, we, we miss you. I know we haven't seen you for a while, but uh, you're, you're my lifeline now. So we have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I hope you can help me. Otherwise, I'm going to fail this quiz. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping that because your studies were more recent than mine, maybe you'll remember these random uh, points of information. All right, let's go. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Let me open Google. Let me open Google. No, no, I'm no, 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 Google. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. So, who has given root canal isthmus classification? A. Sue and Kim. B. Shielder, C. Krasner and Ranko, or D. Vertucci? It's a conglomerate of, of international names, so hopefully you'll make sense out of this. At first I thought it was a geography question when I heard the word isthmus, but apparently it has to do with the pulp. Yeah, this, this sounds... Very familiar. I want to feel like it, was, the, was there an Asian one? Yeah, it was Sue and Kim. All right, so what's your answer? Sue and Kim. Sue and Kim. Well, they, they sound very intelligent. So, they do. Yeah. Is Correct! Oh my god, you were right! <laughs> yeah, you saved the day! Thank you, Dr. Hamoui! Thank you. This one was definitely worth it. Thank you. Which of the following dentinal layers is more mineralized? A. Peritubular dentin. B. Intertubular dentin. C. Dentinal tubules. Or D. Circumpulpal dentin. Those are some nice words. 
a lot of Latin adjectives. Oh, so now you're going to for sure words. get it. Yes. Um, Circumpulpal dentin is not that mineralized, okay? It's uh, that part of the dentin which is further away from the pulp is more mm -hmm. mineralized. So, as far as I remember vaguely from my lectures... 30 years ago! <laughs> <laughs> it's the peritubular dentin. You have a good memory. Mm -hmm. It's peritubular dentin. Yeah. Number eight, very easy question. This is a freebie. What is the minimum amount of space required between a natural tooth and an implant to ensure adequate blood supply to the natural dentition? Is I don't think you need even answer choices, but that's let me in let the me. bone, hopefully, right? I'm uh, sure it's bone yeah. then, yeah. Um, so A, one and a half to two mm -hmm. millimeters, B, three millimeters, C, four millimeters, D, five millimeters. So the minimum amount. What needed. is the minimum that's amount? One to two. Yeah, one yeah. and a half to two. Yeah, there. otherwise it would be very tight. The normal white cell differential count for neutrophils is A, 10 to 19 percent, B, 20 to 29 percent, C, 30 to 39 percent, D, 40 to 65 percent, E, 66 to 90 percent. <laughs> thinking they're too neutral, so maybe there are more of those than we think. I don't know. It's like neutrophils out of the white blood cells, right? Uh -huh. Hmm. Neutrophils. I'd say more than half, maybe. But let's do 40 to 65, but I'm sure it's going to be wrong. It's right! It's right? Yay! Woo! <laughs> You're making Dennis... I'm even like a hematologist here. <laughs> You're making Dennis look really good right wow. now. Wow. Number 10. You've only missed one question. One. And that's about the embryology. I wasn't that good in embryology, so... Well, we still have more questions, so... Okay. In general, a needle stick injury during a patient care visit can potentially transmit all of the following except one. Which one is the exception? A, hepatitis A, B, hepatitis B, C, hepatitis C, D, hepatitis D, or E, HIV? Well, I hope you know the answer. I'm going to leave it up to you. No, that's not... <laughs> I know the answer okay, because it's a very it. current theme. All right, say it. Yeah, it's A. Good job! Of course, because where do you get A from? A poop. <laughs> yes, poop! <laughs> that's why you have to wash your hands after you poop. Okay, we can cut that up. Are Most people good? don't, that's why we get high hepatitis A, right? You guys, you better wash your hands when you go to the toilet. I haven't seen a lot of dentists in seminars not wash their hands when Ew. I... Ew! Yes. Oh my god. I hope you're not one of them. Yes, you. <laughs> well, you're gonna identify this instrument. Curved probe, neighbor's probe, Marcus color-coded probe, or none of the above. Okay. okay. I have no idea who Marcus is, but... Um, neighbor, that sounds interesting. Neighbor. neighbor. Which means that like you're checking the neighboring tooth? But, nah. Look, why don't we just call it a curved probe? Is that, you're right. There is an answer. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah <laughs> curved? Cool. Curved, yeah. For sure? Yeah, but I, I bet you it's going to have a name attached to it, so maybe it's Marcus. I don't know who Marcus was. <laughs> I don't know. Why do they name instruments out of people? What if we have a Sarkeesian pro? No. You should make your own I don't want. I don't want my name to be remembered after a little piece of instrument so that you stick in between teeth. Or after a disease, you know, <laughs> like Sjogren syndrome. Mr. Sjogren is very happy now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's get back to the subject. Okay, so curve? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wrong. I knew it. It's neighbor's probe. Neighbor! You see, my instinct told me maybe you're kind of reaching around to probe the neighbor, but then all teeth are neighboring each other. Okay, neighbor. Love thy neighbor. See, it's a very biblical term. Number 12. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. The minimal concentration of oxygen that should be used with nitrous oxide anal... <laughs> Analgesia? Yes! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> is A, 10%, B, 20%, C, 30%, D, 40%. What is analgesia? <laughs> oh, we'll get back to that. That's Greek, so we'll, oh, get, we'll get to that. 
that will be like the neighbor. Um, uh, the minimum concentration. Minimal concentration of oxygen, of oxygen. that should be used mm -hmm. with nitrous oxide and old GCF. Twenty. Mm. Is that your final answer? Yes. Can I just say maybe twenty or thirty? No, you have to choose one. Oh come on. Okay, twenty because under twenty would be critical. How are you so smart? <laughs> what is that right? Yeah. Well, we use nitrous oxide almost yeah, I would every hope, day. I would hope you know this <laughs> answer, but still. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Whew, that's good. What's that's analgesia? Good. Thank you. Analgesia. An is no or none, right? Al algos is pain in Greek, so it means no pain. That's it. That's it? Simple. It is Greek. Ooh, this is a anatomical question type question. I love anatomy. Me too. Yes. Except I don't remember this answer from my anatomy class. Larynx extends from A, C2 to C7, B, C1 to C4, C, C5 to C6, or D, C3 to C6. Did we have to relate it to the vertebrae? <laughs> oh my god. See the larynx here, so... The jaw broke. <laughs> Yeah, dislocated jaw. And breaking up C2 to 3, 7 into two possible I didn't answers. Make, I, didn't, I didn't make up these questions. Hmm. I'd say it's definitely not the first three or four Cs, so it must be... Do we have a four to six? Three to six. <laughs> that was quick. It so gives me a longer range. Three to six. Because larynx is mm -hmm. kind of here. Kind of? Yes. Okay, your larynx is kind of here. Okay, everyone touch your larynx. Mm-hmm. Okay. Start counting. One, two, Start three. Start counting. <laughs> is this what you did in the yeah. exams at dental school? Well, let me see. Five to six. Okay, so... My final answer. You went from three to six to five to six. Yes. Final answer. Yes. Obviously, you want me to be specific. You should have stuck with your first answer. It's three to three six. Three to six? Oh, come on. Three to six is a long segment. I mean, how can that larynx be that long? Apparently it is, huh? Your larynx is long. ADA, specification for orthodontic wires is A, 32, B, 30, C, 27, D, 25. I have no idea what the hell this means, by the way. Do you think I do? You're the dentist. <laughs> I would just assume you know what these numbers mean because I don't. I really have no idea about this thing. I, I okay, just have then to admit, you gotta guess. I'm, like, I'm confessing, okay? I don't know these ADA classifications. Let's do 30. Final answer? Mm -hmm. Did I guess right? <laughs> no. Okay. You were close. 32. Yeah. 32. There is, okay. there is um, a description of these, like the answer. Mm -hmm in the Instagram post. Oh, 32, that's a very important number. I should have said 32 oh, because 32, we all have 32, 32 teeth. teeth. Where are you? An 11 year old male complains of blackening of teeth and his mother gives a history of frequent snacking on sweets and sugary beverages in between meals. Intraoral examination reveals multiple carious teeth. How many radiographs would be required for a full mouth survey of this patient? Number... 11 year old. So 8, mm -hmm. 10, 14, or 18. Okay, let's start counting. Two bite wings, okay. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's a minimum of 8 plus 4, 12. Okay, there's no answer of <laughs> 12. Just do as many as you want. 8. I mean, 11 year old. 11 year old male. You need um, a full mouth survey of the patient. Mm -hmm. Suspense. 12. I said there's no 12. <laughs> he really wants to say 12. Well, because we're all trigger happy, I'd say 14, but I personally would just take 8. It has a lot of decay, you said, which means that most yeah, of these are probably teeth. on baby teeth. The male because they retain their baby teeth more, so they're kind of slow, you know, males. So 
Two bite wings. Six PAs. Ten. Do we have ten? We do. Let's do ten. They're choosing ten for sure? Yes. The answer is fourteen. Fourteen, of course, because <laughs> dentists are trigger happy. A patient got trauma and a metal rod inserted in superior orbital fissures causes damage of what? Oculomotor nerve? Oculomotor and ophthalmic nerve? Only ophthalmic nerve or trochlear and vagus nerve? <laughs> oh my vagus has nothing to do with that. Vagus is here. Oc oculomotor. Only? Yes. It's both. It's both? Present oh. between lesser and greater wings of the sphenoid within the orbital cavity. Okay. Just one thing, dental students, learn your uh, sphenoid very well. Oh, I hate that. I the hate sphenoid this. has so many Yeah, that's why fissures. I hate it. There's like literally zillions of things. Yeah, it's like the sphenoid is the base of your skull, so you've got to know your sphenoid. Skin graft for facial wounds is taken from medial aspect of thigh, mm -hmm. cubital fossa, groin, or post auricular region. Post auricular is here. I don't think it's here. Um, what about the groin? Facial gra grafts, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, wait. Uh, It's not the ear, it's not the, let's say it's not the groin. <laughs> so there's cubital fossa, and what's the fourth? Medial aspect of thigh. The thigh. It's either the thigh or the cubital. Cubital fossa is here. It's the armpit. It's kind of hard. Take some tissue from you. Okay. Um, thigh. Is that your final answer? Yes. Correct! Infectious mononucleosis is confirmed by A, a blood smear, B, a monospot test, C, freeze test, Names again. or D, Hess test. Head? Hess. Hess. <laughs> Two names. Oh my god, these names. They're all names. Monospot test, isn't that monospot? name? Monospot? Mono, monospot, okay. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Freeze. Mono, yeah, mono. Let's take that one then, monospot. Are you sure? I'm sure that's not it, but... Just, it just, is it. it is it? Yes. <laughs> you know, monospot, it says, is also known as Paul Bunnell test. Oh, another name, Paul Bunnell test. Which is false about enamel spindle? A. Diameter is 2 micrometers. B. Extended odontoblastic process in enamel. It has an extended odontoblastic mm -hmm. uh, process in enamel. Okay. C. Oriented at an acute angle to the dentin. Or D is dark, dehydrated, in transmitted light. There are three that are more logical. So which is false? The is false that... is the third one, which is an acute angle, because the odontoblastic process would not make a, an abrupt turn in the enamel. Correct! Good job. Yeah. And the last question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Nasopalatine cyst arises from A, an embryonic, <laughs> you hate embryo questions. There we go with our embryos again. An embryonic remnant of nasopalatine duct, B, cell rest of malasse? Malasse? Okay. Do you know, am I no. saying it wrong? <laughs> Just give me C, forget it. C, cell rest of ser. Or Saray? Or Sare? <laughs> okay, here we go. Another name? I don't think it's a name. It's not capitalized. Oh. S <laughs> E R R E. Sarah. Sarah. D is cell remnants of maxillary sinus. Well, that's definitely not it. You don't have a sinus here. So. <laughs> And I don't know about the Sarah Mera stuff, you know, that's, I think they're just like trying, trying to like throw us off. It's, it's one, okay? Number eight, one. Is that your final answer? Yes. You're smart! We better know our cysts, come on. Well... Wait till, wait till you get to the lower jaw cysts. All those nice little 
spaces in your jawbone. Good job. How many did you get? I need to give you a grade. Hold on. How do they grade in dental school? Mm -hmm. It would be a fail. Are you sure? There's a lot of competition in dental school. You got 14 out of 20. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's really 70%. Mm -hmm. 70% is not bad, you know, for someone, who someone who's school like for being thrown like embryology questions and names. isthmus <laughs> questions and names and all sorts of uh, random things that have nothing to do with teeth. In a way they do, but I guess you need them if you get your license, right? Yeah, but you did good. But next time, if you guys like this video, next time Dr. Sarkeesian will ask me questions to see how much a pre-dental knows before going into dental school. She's gonna be doing much better. Um, I'm gonna link his Instagram in the description, so go follow him. Also, I'll link his website, so if you guys wanna check that out, you can, and I'll see you next time.